when I start palpating a horse, I want to make a relationship with that horse. I want him to know that I'm not here to poke him and just to hurt him. This muscle runs down the neck, and in your books it's called the brachiocephalicus. You get the older book in Latin, it's called the levator humeri. And it is elevating the humerus. This is what starts the extension of the foreleg. So if the horse is sore at the origin, and if he's sore at the insertion down here, it means he's overworking this muscle to get his front leg out to stay under himself. This is often caused by a saddle that is pinching in the wither area, the trapezius muscle, causing the back to dorsiflex, overworking the hindquarters, overworking this muscle as well. So I've just started here, but I've got to make friends with the guy. So he gives me honest responses as I go through palpating the rest of the horse. So I do a little bit of deep pressure massage. Now what hurt there to begin with, if you hold, and I can take a set of uh, bathroom scales and with two hands, make them read 220 pounds. So I do have a bit of a paw that has some strength to do this. But you see the eye is starting to soften a little. He's a little apprehensive. We're getting better. That's because I'm just holding with the pressure. This uh, activates the hormonal system. The pain to the brain releases histamines, endorphins, to relax that tensed and sore area that relaxes the whole horse. At the same time, cross fiber friction is just that on the muscle. This is close to the attachment point which gets sore first before the belly of the muscle. The belly of the muscle is the last part of the muscle to get sore. It's the attachment, the origin, and the insertion are the two attachments where the muscle at the end is attached, right here at the back of the pole. This is why a horse will throw his head and neck up when you're riding at a trot to make better use of leverage on this muscle to pull the front leg out. Also because it's natural for the head and neck to go up if he's pinched right there. So we're going to say, hey, this guy really pretty nice. He's making me feel good by now. Right. So he's not going to give me a flight response like I'm a predator as I go down the rest of the horse. When I walk up to a horse, and I can get a hold of this muscle and do this. Then I know how long this horse has been sore and uh, how deep the damage is in the back. Now right now I'm gain, trying to gain his confidence, make him feel a little better. This, all horses are apprehensive to this. It's a matter of degree. When you find a lot of knotting here, I've seen horses that were ready to go to the killers, the vets, the chiropractors, everybody done all, all they could. The knotting in this muscle called spasm that have been there for a long time is what makes a horse go lame on the forehand. Not, it doesn't make him go lame, it's, it's a result of as well. All of the muscles through here stopping the suspension of a deep digital flexor tendon and muscle that is the support cable for the front end of your horse. So <clears throat> working on a cutting horse one time, I did an hour and a half of massage, a lot of it right here. The horse literally drooled all over the ground. When I got through, he walked out with the rest of the body, obviously, he walked out without the lameness that he had been consistent for al almost a full year. Now that's a horse that was very saddle sore. Now we're gaining a little confidence. I'm going to palpate down under the shoulder. 
He said, that's a little uncomfortable there. So we've got some soreness in this muscle. It's not natural per se, but it's not bad. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the sorest, this is about a three. So not bad at all. You can overwork a horse and get this, but more than that's a, a really speed sport. <clears throat> so next thing I'm gonna check for is palpating the spinous processes. Running my fingers right down the spinous processes. Doesn't take a lot of pressure. And I'm feeling in between the spinous processes with my fingertips. This is the veterinary clinical test for spondylitis and spondylosis, which is the advanced form of the early inflammation called spondylitis. I'll show you with a spinal column after a while what that is, but this is what cuts a horse's career short, eliminates the horse being used for anything, but walking around, taking care of little kids in no speed sports. That's the most damaging thing that you can do to a horse is to have the spinous processes impinging on each other because the back is locked down like this as you ride. So this is a reaction that's not too bad on a scale of one to 10. The amount of soreness in the trapezius here, again, is about a three. It's from pinching of the saddle. The saddle tree itself having too much contact right here. Said you like me, but you don't want to stick around for that, huh? To check here, if a horse has been ridden quite a bit, like the day before, a lot, you'll get a response in the loin area. You check with your fingernails. I have no responses right now. He hasn't been ridden too much as of late. But you always have some movement at the rear of the saddle. What this can tell you is the preferred lead of the horse. So the side that the horse flinches on the most in the loin is the preferred lead side for that horse. All horses are either right-handed or left-handed. If he's a left lead horse, he's right-handed. Just like if you're a right-handed person, you lead with your left. When you run, when you walk, and the chiropractor is always trying to straighten you out. You can straighten the horse out through some tricks with saddling and also with riding. And it can be much quicker and more efficient than you would think. We have an idea of what's going on right here. To pick up the leg, palpate the shoulder where a saddle runs into it, right here. That's where the real damage comes is a saddle tree running into the shoulder. And now, I'm going to turn the horse around. We'll do the other side. And see how much difference there is. A lot more sore on this side, is it not? That should give me an indication that if I palpate right here, and push with pressure, it isn't going to be near as sensitive right here. Joe, could you hold him for a minute? It isn't going to be as sensitive here, although it's still sore. It is pinched as it is over here. See, I don't have to be pushing with all my weight on the other side because this side of the wither is what keeps this saddle on this horse from going further to the right. The big response we got down deep here is the horse is a left lead preferred horse. He's dropping his weight on his right front. When he does, he tenses the muscles in the right shoulder 
and the saddle drops to the right and it bites in with a bar down here. When that happens, he pulls away from the pain. So the more you ride, it's progressive. The more one-sided he becomes. And the more the wither right here catches the saddle. And you see the soaring here because it's rubbing. But it's not as great a pressure as you get down deep right here in the scapula. The way to fix this, <laughs> to begin with, is to put extra shims, as I call them, balance shims, on this side, none on this side, shorten the rider's stirrup on the right, lengthen it on the left. The simple way to think of this is to go ahead and burden his uh, left fore while freeing up his right forehand. So your saddle, when you get on, is way over to the left takes three quarter inch balance shims and you are over to the left. When you start to ride the horse, the horse, the saddle goes to the middle. It's going to change the way the horse goes because he is trying to get you over to the right to where he can drop his weight there. He has a lazy left hind. He is starting the lifting action at the left hind and uh, for the right front. He doesn't use it actively. He drops his weight there and he doesn't push off strongly with the left hind. That's why you get the loin rubbing here on the left lead horse. Because when he pushes off with the left hind, he doesn't tighten his back as he should and he shoves his rear over to the right and you get more rubbing on the right because you don't have the good firm contact with the saddle. Let's take a break, let me get a saddle tree, give you a little sample. 